In this video, we're going to take a look at the sample processing in a typical digital oscilloscope. More specifically, we're going to look at sample rate and record length and waveform memory and what gets displayed on the oscilloscope screen. Now, there's a, this is a generic block diagram of the sample processing of a digital scope. Of course, there are specific differences with different manufacturers and a whole lot of detail that I'm not showing. But here's the basic process. The analog signal comes into the front end, and then that signal is given to the analog to digital converter, which takes snapshots of the voltage over time. Those digital snapshots are essentially sent to the sample processing hardware, along with a trigger to determine what gets placed into waveform memory, into RAM. Now once we've got that data in RAM, there's some additional processing that determines what gets displayed on the screen in terms of a waveform and measurements. Now of course the sample rate is nothing more than how quickly we're taking voltage snapshots of the input waveform and is simply one over the time difference between the samples. So the three parameters are really intimately linked together. We have sample rate, and our horizontal time scale, which determines the total duration of the waveform we're going to capture, and that's typically, you know, the nanoseconds or microseconds per division that you've got set up on the scope. And then, of course, the waveform record length, which is the number of samples that we store in RAM. Okay, And it's really just uh, a quite uh, simple thing. We take our sample rate, which is samples per second, and for how long are we going to do that? So it's really just a product of those two that, that determines the overall record length. Here's an example. At a sample rate of 5 giga sample per second and a horizontal time scale of 20 microseconds per division, um, we can figure out the record length by simply looking at this equation. So 20 microseconds per division times 10 divisions gives me 200 microseconds of duration, okay, time duration, 200 microseconds of time duration times 5 giga sample per second gives me a million sample points. And you can see that if you adjust the time per division up or down, the amount of memory will, will be different. If I adjust the amount of memory I have, then I will have to adjust you know, one of these other two parameters, because it's really simply that relationship. So let's take a look at this in a little more detail. Okay. So it's quite simply this equation. Record length is equal to sample rate times time duration. Of course, every manufacturer is going to give you different controls for uh, controlling this. And as you can see, that, that longer time durations, obviously slower time per division settings, a lot of memory is required for a given sample rate. So normally what happens is that at these slower time-based settings, uh, a, sa a sample rate is reduced in one way, shape, or form. So the key question is how. How is the sample rate reduced? And that really is something called the sample mode in most of these digital oscilloscopes. And the most common way uh, is something called the just the sample mode or normal mode. And what that typically means is let's consider this situation. I've got an analog waveform coming in. Let's say the raw sample rate is sampling every division on my graph paper here. But I really only need you know, every, say, fourth point. Uh, the sample mode, or normal mode, typically takes just one point out of that whole desired sample interval and saves it. So maybe that one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and throws away the rest of the points. It's a process called decimation, and that's typically how that works. And, the, and it works really well, and it's really fast and easy to implement. The problem is that you might throw away points that would hide, you know, maybe a glitch or something like that. So there's another sample mode called peak mode, or peak detect mode. And what that does is it looks at, you know, these sample intervals and saves the highest and lowest values in the adjacent sample point, or sample intervals and saves those values. So now you'll know if I had a glitch or a peak or something like that that you might want to go take a closer look at. Now another, another very interesting way of reducing the sample rate is to use what's called high resolution mode. What high resolution mode does is it takes all of the samples that occur in each of those desired sample intervals and averages averages each of those together to a single point for each sample interval. Okay, and the result of averaging those points to a single point is essentially a little bit of a low-pass filter and essentially getting some enhanced vertical resolution. Now all of these sample modes will work on you know, single-shot situations where I do a single acquisition and I display the data. 
Now if we consider taking multiple acquisitions, we can add some more modes, something like an envelope mode. An envelope mode is really nothing more than the peak mode, but then updating the min and max values with, with new acquisition data so it can keep track of the, the min and max that are really happening over time. And also we have an average mode that we can use. Average mode is basically the sample mode, but then averaging those sample points together from multiple acquisitions. So these are the typical sample modes and things like that. And, and every scope, every manufacturer is going to give you some different controls for controlling the sample rate and the sample mode and the record length and things like that uh, is going to vary. So you really need to learn you know, how yours works. The example of this, uh, this Tektronix scope here that runs at, say, 5 giga sample per second, uh, the controls for this are, are actually all under this acquire menu right here. So we would set, say, in the horizontal position, set our horizontal scale to determine how much of a record length we want to capture. Okay, and then under the acquire mode, we can de we can determine how much you know record length we want. And the nice thing about this scope is it really shows you everything that's going on. If we look here, I can see I've got a 200 microsecond per division horizontal time scale. I've got set to 10,000 waveform points in my waveform memory which results in 5 mega sample per second. Okay, you can just do the math uh, for that, it's actually pretty easy. So, um, now the scope of course is sampling at 5 giga sample per second. So there's an awful lot of decimation going on in using the sample mode here. But uh, the way to determine uh, what, we're, what we're doing here is we can see the sample mode uh, right here uh, is actually using the sample mode. If I push that button, look up on the side menu here, I can actually see I've got a sample mode. That's the one of the acquisition modes. I've got the peak detect, and I've got high res. I've also got the envelope mode and the average mode. So that's where I would make that selection. The next button down here allows me to determine record length. Okay, so right now it's set to 10,000 points, as we saw over here. Now if I change that, if I go to instead of 10,000 points, Let's say I adjust that to 100,000 points. Okay, if I knock that to 100,000 points, and now if I look down the display, I can see that now my sample rate, instead of being 5 mega sample per second, is now 50. And if I keep going down, I can see I can keep going down until I've got 10 million points or 20 million points. I'm sampling at 5 giga sample per second. Okay, so so this scope is really nice. It doesn't hide any of that from you. You know, some manufacturers you know, kind of take the opinion that. You know, we don't want to bother the user with worrying about sample rate and, and that kind of thing. And I kind of view that as a bit of a problem because I really want to know, you know what I'm saving, what I'm looking at, and what I'm using. So this scope is really nice that uh, it kind of shows you all of that. So the next big question, though, is how is the waveform record displayed on the scope screen? Okay, even if I've got just 10,000 points here, you know, I don't have 10,000 points you know, across the screen, right? The screen probably has a thousand pixels. So I still have to somehow take those 10,000 points and get them to display, you know, the waveform on the screen. So, you know, usually, you know, the waveform record is going to be much longer than the number of pixels in the display horizontally. And how that works, again, is going to vary by manufacturer. Okay. At Tektronix, typically, uh, what we'll do is take all of those sample points that are in waveform memory Okay, and then take a look at the number of points we want to display. And it's the same kind of situation we looked at earlier, where I've got you know a number of sample points that need to be compressed into one. And the way Tektronix typically does that is it takes all of those points and plots them all essentially in that column. And then the more overlap you have, the brighter that intensity would be. If we look really carefully, you might be able to see, I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not, that there's a little bit of an intensity difference uh, in the center of that uh, top edge there versus the others. And that's more overlap, more points plotted in that area. So that's typically how Tektronix will handle that issue. Now, of course, different manufacturers may use different algorithms to reduce the data from waveform memory to the, the, the points that get displayed on the screen. And uh, so you know, for example, if uh, a reduced set of points, almost like a sample mode is used, 
you, you could tend to lose a lot of resolution in what you see on the screen. I mean, for example, if I've got you know 10,000 points in my waveform record here, but I've only got a thousand you know pixels available to me across the screen, you know I'm going to take only one tenth of the points to display on the screen. Now, of course, if I had a you know, hundred thousand points or a million points, there's an awful lot of points that get decimated away and are not displayed. So, uh, you know, I said tech typically will put all of the points you know in a column so you see everything that's in the waveform record. Some manufacturers pull a subset of that data, you know, maybe a thousand points or maybe, you know, something more than that to display on the screen. And by not processing the entire record, okay, to display on the screen, it can result in a very fast looking waveform update, but you also could lose data and lose resolution in the measurements that you make. So you have to really understand, you know, how your particular manufacturer handles you know, processing that waveform data to put up on the screen for both the waveform and measurements that you're making. Okay, and that's the other important thing is that once the the samples are you know in waveform memory and you've got a, a waveform on the screen, what points, what samples are used for the measurements, like a rise and fall time or frequency measurement? So is it the full waveform record sample points, you know, that full million points or ten million points or whatever it is? Or is, it, or is it just the displayed points, you know, the thousand points that are on the screen? Or is it something else, maybe something in between those two? You know, if the manufacturer is taking a subset of the waveform record to process for the screen, it might do some amount of overlap on the, you know, on the, uh, the displayed sample points, but isn't displaying all of them. And if it's making measurements on those, you, you can have some accuracy issues and things like that. Uh, when making some measurements. So it's again it's very important for you to understand how your scope is processing that data from the waveform record to the measurements. So let's take a look at uh, how that you know, is kind of handled here on this Tektronix scope. So uh, as we saw down below here I've got a 200 microsecond per division 5 mega sample per second 10,000 points. Now let's add some measurements here. So I'm going to go to uh, my measurements button and tell it I want to go and add a measurement. And uh, let's add, say, a rise time measurement. Let's add a fall time measurement and a frequency measurement. Okay. So now the scope is smart enough to recognize the fact that, hey, I can get a frequency measurement here, no problem. There's about two kilohertz. But it's also on the rise and fall time measurement, it's telling me that I've got low resolution. So the scope is recognizing the fact that you know, at, at only 10,000 points, at, you know, at this time-based setting, I'm running at 5 mega sample per second. So, uh, I, and I haven't sampled enough data points, okay, to put enough points along that rising and falling edge to make that measurement accurately. So this is your key to know that, hey, I need to increase my sample rate, okay, in order to get better measurements here. So I really can't believe these numbers. But at least, but you've got an indication here that's telling you what's going on. So what we want to do is simply control, you know, or basically improve our sample rate. We're, I want to keep the time base the same, so I'm going to leave that alone. So the way that we bring the sample rate up is we just tell it to use more samples. So the way we do that here is I simply bring up the Acquire menu on the horizontal uh, controls here. And then in the Acquire menu I can see the mode I'm using is sample, and that's fine. But the record length right here is 10K. So let me hit the record length button and I can go pick a new record length. So instead of 10,000 points, let's go to, say, 100,000 points. Uh, 100,000 points, I can see my sample rate has bumped up to 50 mega sample per second. Okay, I still are showing low resolution, so I'll bump the resolution up again. Say there's 1 million points. So I've got a million sample points, or maybe even 5 million sample points, or 10 million sample points. I can kind of dial that in. Now I can see with a 10 million sample point record, I'm running at 5 giga sample per second, still at that 200 microseconds per division, and now I can see that my rise and fall time measurements are being fully populated. So now I can see that they're about you know, 12 or 13 nanoseconds. And uh, if the scope was you know, doing some tricks in terms of only pulling a subset of that waveform data out to make the measurements and to do the display, I wouldn't be able to make, say, a, you know, a 13 nanosecond rise and fall time measurement on the same screen as the 2 kilohertz uh, frequency measurement. You know, I would have to probably go in to make rise and fall time measurements, you know, speed the scope way up so I can actually see the rise time and make the rise time measurement that way. 
and then maybe t right, adjust some settings to make the fault time measurement, adjust some settings to make the frequency measurement. But by having full control over what's going on in the time base and the record length and the number of samples that we're using, etc., you can ensure that you get good accurate results here. So I just uh, made a bunch of changes here. There we go. So we can actually see the actual measurements being made. So in a sense, it's really a trade-off of how snappy and fast you want the interface to be versus you know, being able to show accurate results. So tech has kind of always opted on the side of uh, you know, making sure that we make our measurements on the full record length that is sitting in waveform memory. Okay. And then, uh, and then telling you when that record length isn't sufficient or the sample density isn't sufficient and giving you some very clear indicators of what's going on in terms of waveform points, sample rate, and time base. So you can you know, make those adjustments as necessary to get the accurate results. So that's a, you know, kind of a brief tour of what goes on typically with uh, waveform processing, sample processing, in a typical digital oscilloscope. And, uh, and some of the concerns and things that you might want to think about uh, when considering how your scope is operating and how it's making measurements. So thanks for watching. I realize I didn't cover you know, a lot of details about how, you know, how many waveforms per second we get to the screen and you know, a lot of other things that happen in these digital scopes, but the idea with this video is simply to show you know, how the processing uh, you know, flows through the instrument and the considerations that you need to t keep in mind when setting up the scope to make some accurate measurements with the waveform data you have in memory. Thanks for watching. Comments are welcome. And uh, talk to you again soon.